Chelsea Manning has broken her silence on the ongoing conflict with the Islamic State. Writing an op-ed for The Guardian in her, from her cell in Fort Leavenworth, Manning criticized this President Obama's plan for action against ISIS. Now, what did she have to say? Well, she writes, quote, based on my experience as an all-sourced analyst in Iraq during the organization's relative infancy, ISIS cannot be defeated by bombs and bullets. Even as a fight is taken to Syria, and even if it's conducted by non-Western forces with air support. Now, uh, interesting. Uh, I happen to agree with a little bit of that, but we'll continue with uh, Manning. She says, quote, attacking ISIS directly by airstrikes or special operations forces is a very tempting option available to policymakers with immediate but not always good results. Fortunately, when the West fights fire with fire, we feed into a cycle of outrage, recruitment, organizing, and even more fighting that goes back decades. It's exactly what happened in Iraq during the height of the Civil War in 2006 and 2007, and it can only be expected to occur again. Now, this is a lesson that I think we uh, should have learned by now uh, from us doing things like, I don't know, uh, signature strikes, for example, where we don't know who we're bombing, but we fucking bomb them anyway. And that's how we end up bombing weddings, funerals, children, innocent people, along with the, along with the occasional terrorists. We do get them. Manning continues, quote, I believe that ISIS strategically feeds off the mistakes and vulnerabilities of the very democratic Western states that they decry. The Islamic State's center of gravity is, in many ways, the United States, the United Kingdom, and those aligned with them in the region. So basically what she's trying to say is that we're the focus, we are the cause, the creation, and the focus of ISIS in the region. I mean, it only makes a lot of sense because that's they're, they're taunting us with the continued beheadings and the, the shitty video they, they came out with just recently. They want us involved. So what, is, uh, so what does Chelsea Manning suggest? She says, quote, I believe that a very, only a very focused uh, and consistent strategy of containment can be effective in reducing the growth and effectiveness of ISIS as a threat. Well, how do you do that? Well, Manning says you have to counter the narrative set some clear temporary borders, stop payment for ransom of hostages, prevent ISIS from stealing artifacts and treasures, to basically kind of slow their income, and of course prevent them from taking oil fields. Makes sense? Now finally she says let them set up their own failed state in a contained area and basically wait for them to implode. Quote, eventually if they're properly contained, I believe that ISIS will not be able to sustain itself on rapid growth alone. It will, begin it will begin to fracture internally. The organization will begin to disintegrate into several smaller, uncoordinated entities, ultimately failing in their objective of creating a strong state. ISIS is wielding a sharp, heavy, and very deadly double-edged sword. Now just wait for them to fall on it. Interesting. I actually really enjoyed reading this op-ed, and uh, I agree with a lot of these points. But uh, let's go to the panel's reaction on this. Nick, what do you think? Um, she does raise some very good points. Um, at the start, I was initially in agreement with her, but um, thinking on it more, I don't, I don't think that'll necessarily work. Um, for one very particular reason, uh, the head of ISIS is a former Saddam Hussein, uh, at the very least army official, I think, and a lot of the people who fight, who are fighting with ISIS, are maybe a uh, are not necessarily fighting, but also working with ISIS, were uh, former Saddam Hussein officials. They they have some of the people there who can who do have the capacity to, in some ways, govern and manage bureaucracy and administration for uh, an area. So it's not like it's not just that they're they're moving fast. It's also that they do have some people in positions of leadership who have <laughs> prior experience with governing a country so it's it is it's de she's po it's possible she's right um, but I think it's also possible that they won't implode um, we see that every now and then too there's lots of uh, movement popular rising movements if you will um, that succeed and are built off of momentum that then stabilize um, Turkey's Turkey because of that 
Uh, granted, this was over a much longer period of time. We're talking centuries and centuries of Turkish migration into the region and various different uh, sultanates. But yeah, they when they were done being nomadic, they settled and they set up bureaucracy. And it could be rocky, but they figured it out. I, I there's all there's a lot of historical examples we can look at that go either way, and I think it's a little difficult of a situation to accurately predict which way it would go if we did that. So it's it's an interesting thought experiment. Um, I would say cautious interaction and cautious military intervention into the situation. Not like boots on the ground stuff. We're talking, as she mentions earlier, uh, small uh, special forces strikes and things like that and a couple airstrikes. Uh, opportune strikes like that, I think, are for now would be the wisest, most prudent course of action. And while giving the the region overall some broader space in terms of uh, any any stronger military action, but it's it might be worth trying. But I, it's 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 uh, that's it's also a double edged sword because if it doesn't work, you might have, you have a radical state there. So yeah, I. I, I, Nick Nick brings up some good historical points, but the problem and the reason why I think uh, Chelsea Manning is right that um, the airstrikes and our bombing campaign will lead to more people joining ISIS is because we're essentially like picking a Shiite side in a civil war. Like we're saying we're not going to work with Iran, we're saying we're not going to work with the Shiites, but uh, Maliki's government was a Shiite government. We installed them. Like they're they're painting themselves, and ISIS, of course, doesn't represent all Sunnis. They're painting themselves as a Sunni uprising against an oppressive Shia state, and we're going to put them down. But we wouldn't interfere with Assad, and we wouldn't interfere with, uh, we wouldn't stop Maliki. We let we left, and we let him do whatever he wanted. Like this is the, what they're going to say that we're doing. So, like it will uh, to me, like this intervention does draw more people under the banner of ISIS that probably would not normally have joined them. And as far as them being able to hold territory temporarily, they should be able to hold at least the Sunni parts of, of what is the fiction that is Iraq. But there's no way they're going to be able to hold um, the Shiite parts of Iraq. Like, they're not going to keep advancing like this, you know, this caliphate that we're being warned about by, like, the crazies is not going to keep going. Like... They're not going to be able. They're not going to be able to hold the Shiite territories for the same reasons that the Shiite weren't able to hold the Sunni territories. So, like maybe a little mixture, maybe like a third, a three-state idea, but not. Um, it's not going to be like a caliphate or anything that we're being told. Jordan. Yeah, excellent points uh, all around, both from you guys and from Chelsea. Um, and I guess the thing that. That, that, that what's what I have a hard time getting behind Chelsea's statements is uh, you know basically basically she's saying you know let them fall on their own sword you know let them become a bureaucracy and you know fall apart or whatever but how many people die in the interim you know um, and it, and it's not and again obviously if we start a war people die as well but I mean. ISIS has made it clear that they're not just interested in people dying; like they're interested in like, ethnic cleansing and, and genocide. And, you know, like do the Yazidis still exist after whatever amount of time has to pass for ISIS to collapse if we let it, you know, run its own devices? I think that evil, destructive, and I think right. Um, <clears throat> and, and I just I'm I'm one of the many voices out there who's Who's saying that, you know, what has been suggested is probably not the way to go, but I don't know what the way to go is. That it's it's very tricky, and that's why I said it, it really could go either way. Uh, in, in it really on any side of this, if we do what we continue to do, or if we follow Mel, uh, Chelsea Manning's advice. So, All right. Um, I just want to make two very quick points um, that I've actually heard on Fox to show you to mess up this issue is because they have actually been slightly right on some things. The first is the last four presidents of the United States, if you count this, this president this action, will have engaged in a separate military action against Iraq. If the three didn't work before, let's chill the hell. Like, it's not going to work this time. And the other point is um, 
in the Middle East, the enemy of my enemy is still our enemy, so let's not take sides. Uh, and to sort of round it out, I don't, I don't really think um, we're going to take Chelsea Manning's advice just as a policy pers- perspective. No, because, really? No, 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 no. Hold on. I, I don't. I really doubt that we're going to be doing that. I think it's going to be drone strikes and airstrikes all the way, because that's what President Obama is 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 going to do. And we're also going to arm the Syrian rebels to fight against ISIS. But we don't know which rebels are ISIS and which are not. And so. We're just going to continue fucking up the region even more. 